Hello and welcome back. Now in this section of the course, I'm going to introduce you to the AWS Identity and Access Management Service, AWS IAM. This is a foundational security service that enables you to define exactly who or what can access your AWS account and what it is that they can do in your AWS account. Remember, your AWS account gives you access to a vast range of services on the AWS platform, and you can consume those services, provision various resources to support your core business requirements, such as hosting a web application, for example. You need to make sure that access to your AWS account is highly secured and protected and that only authorized personnel can perform the necessary tasks required for your core business requirements. And so it is very critical that you understand how the AWS IAM service works and how you can protect your AWS account and the services that you consume within it. In order to access the vast array of services on AWS, you need an AWS account. And it is from your AWS account that you'll be able to access the vast array of services that you require for your business. So these could be your compute services, your storage services, your database services, and well, the fact is there's far too many services for me to list on this single page, but rest assured that in order to be able to access those services, you need your AWS account. But how does it actually all work? Well, in order to get access to those services, you connect to your AWS account through a variety of means. So there's the web console, there's the command line interface, and there's also programmatic access using APIs. With these tools in place, you can access the number of different services on the AWS platform. An important aspect to remember here is that all operations that you perform on your AWS account against those services in order to provision necessary resources is done by making what we call API calls. You make API calls to those services in order to provision your various resources. In order to make those API calls, to access those services and provision necessary resources, you need a set of permissions. And the key service on AWS that allows you to define those permissions is the AWS Identity and Access Management Service. Now, when you first created your AWS account, you created something called a root user, the owner of the account. In order to set up this account, you provided an email address and a password of your choice. And AWS provisioned the account for you with a root user, the owner of the account, and the credentials in the form of an email address and password. This root user has full access to your AWS account. And I mean complete access. This root user, in fact, is the god of your AWS account and has the full keys to the kingdom. So this user can provision services, terminate services, and ultimately even close the account down. But in a normal business environment, you're gonna have multiple users in your organization, multiple colleagues. You're gonna have specific users that are developing new applications. You may have users who are just supporting existing environments. You may also have applications that need access to various services and resources, and you may need one service to be able to access other service on the AWS platform. You need a means of ensuring that you grant the right set of permissions to only authorized personnel. And the AWS Identity and Access Management Service enables you to achieve this using two key features of IAM. And these are authentication and authorization. Authentication basically is a means of identifying who you are, and AWS needs to verify your identity. Authorization refers to the sort of permissions that you have once you have been authenticated against the platform. Now on AWS, in addition to the root user, you can provision a wide range of different identities. We call these principles. And these principles come in different forms. So we've got IAM users. These could be human users, like your colleagues, such as George and Alice. You've got something called an IAM role, which is an ability to assume a set of permissions to perform a set of actions that you define. Now we'll discuss IAM roles in a lot more detail in a later video. In addition to IAM users and IAM roles, you can also grant access to identities that are external to your AWS account through a process known as Identity Federation. Identity Federation is effectively a means of allowing users that have external identities or identities with third-party providers, such as OpenID providers like Google, Facebook, and Amazon to gain access to your AWS account and through a set of permissions to be able to perform certain tasks in your AWS account. Many organizations will have an existing on-premise corporate directory structure. You may have heard of this one, 
Active Directory being the most common of them. It is possible to create Identity Federation with Active Directory so that your users in the on-premise environment, your technical individuals and even non-technical individuals are able to access the AWS platform using their Active Directory accounts rather than having to create separate identities for them on the AWS platform itself. And then finally, you also have applications. Now, imagine an application, a web application that needs to access a backend database on the AWS platform. That application needs to be authenticated as well. It needs to have the permission to talk to that database. And here again, the application takes the role of a principle where you do need to give it a means of being able to authenticate itself against that database. Now, even though your principles have been authenticated on the platform, you still need to decide exactly what it is that those principles will be able to do, what it is that those IAM users will be able to do, what it is that that application can do on the AWS platform. And this is where authorization comes into play. Authorization is the second component of AWS IAM that allows you to define permissions in the form of policies. These can be IAM policies, and we also have something else called resource-based policies, which I'll talk a little bit about in another video. But essentially, you need to grant your principles the necessary permissions in order to do certain tasks on AWS, okay? And that's where authorization comes into play. Once your principles have been authenticated on the AWS platform and they have been authorized with a set of permissions that give them the right to do certain tasks on the AWS platform, that's when those principles can go and perform certain tasks. So for instance, they may provision some AWS compute resources like running EC2 instances or deploying a Lambda function. They may, for example, create some S3 buckets, some block storage, and perform certain API calls like get object to retrieve data from those storage services. They may even provision some databases on the AWS platform. So run another API call to create DB instances, for example. Every action that these principles perform on the AWS platform is an API call at the end of the day. And in order for those API calls to take place, those principles need to be authenticated and authorized on the AWS platform. Hopefully this gives you a really brief high level overview about how AWS IAM works. I wanna make sure that in the next set of videos, we are actually deep diving a bit more and looking at these individual components of the IAM service. Join me in the next video. Thank you.